I wonder what the sieves are going to be. <laughs> it's like goth against goth. <laughs> Ethy, Malian, okay. Oh, nice. It's like we're spying on their phone call. So this base actually looks sick. Wall here and here. Oh, these bases are very close. Um, should be pretty aggressive. Uh, berries are both forward. Golds are in uh, not the best locations. De Jake's is probably the better map. Uh, Lumber Camp looks like he's going for it already. Lumber Camp here. Gold Mine. You could wall down, go into range defense if you want. Um, e uh, Drush FC. This seems like an uncharacteristically good base. We'll see if he goes for the, uh, the using the base way or if he'll go for the aggressive way. If he goes aggressive, a uh, lot of open stuff. Berries and wood will be open and then gold will have a hill. Um, this will be a really good hill to take uh, for both players uh, later on, either in castle or in feudal. A lot of value there. Six and three, very standard. So this is where we see whether they go to the boar or do the fourth on wood for the drushing. It's gonna be four on wood for the Jake. Doesn't mean they have to drush, but they can. Um, they can also make that quicker racks for um, uptime and not going uh, the mill. They go for the boar. Okay, so a bit of a chain, uh, difference as well. So one's going three, one's going four. Really want to get that underneath. He's trying. Yeah, that was hard. I think the Vils were actually blocking the the walk that one tile path. Nine on food. Usually don't go over nine. But nine, yeah, nice. Gonna go to the berries now. So good saturation there. Unfortunate that it's way outside of the TC. You really want to try to get them underneath here, so that your villagers can just like this vill. You guys will be able to see the difference. We'll just stand up and drop. And these vills, you know, every second they're walking is food you're wasting. Where are you going? Where are you going? Okay, good, good, good. He has a mission. Okay, good board timings. Mill for both players. So not going to be er any early uh, racks. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah. So my critique here would be to really try and do a better job of getting those, those any hunted animal under the TC. It just, it saves you uh, a lot of food. Yeah, how do they, I mean, I like it. I don't think there should be in, any censoring. When, when I'm playing, it it, it censors out uh, just normal words that are, it's not profanity. It's not like shortened words that look like profanity. It's just like uh, banning just indiscriminate words. <laughs> yeah, it's so refreshing. I agree. Okay, good balance. So the Jake's gonna go for what looks to me like either man at arm or archer opening. Twenty one up though. These guys both need to shave a villager off of their builds because they're doing super good builds, but they, the, it's uh, twenty-one almost feels late. 
Like scout players are doing like some crazy like 16, 17 pop ups sometimes and they, they get there like seven minutes and you're like, oh, <laughs> I'm dead. Like right now a scout player could be up. So their scout would kill your scout and then they'd get one to two more scouts out. Rack's coming in. So Booth I think will go into either stable. Yeah, so I think Booth is going to go stable or one range defense. And then Dejake is certainly going for Mad Arms first. We'll see if he goes for Mad Arms into range or if he goes full yellow again and goes forward with the uh, Tower Bills. Uh, with Ethiopian, I think you're more incentivized just to go for the range and the, the fletching first, where the goth uh, play makes sense to go for the forward range, add the skirms and the towers on if, if needed. Does it? Yeah, I don't really understand the censorship stuff. Like, I get it if it's like an age thing, but if it's like not that, then it doesn't make sense. But I don't really want to get into a whole... I could talk on that for, for days and hours. I guess I should say hours and then days, right? arms out so yeah scout builds need to be a bit faster I, I would say did, uh, if you're going for scout builds and you want to be consistent with it you're trying to do like 18 or 19 population up I think booth went for 21 uh, fortunately though the Jake went a little soft on him this time didn't go for the really sharp timing uh, of mad arms so it about evened out because both players went uh, Booth went up two bills later. The Jake went up one uh, bill later. He is going to go for the more aggressive forward villager way, though, again. Um, okay, he's got... Uh, I like that he, he made a couple farms, too. So you want, like, minimum five on food, right? So you don't idle, but he's got a couple extra. So he'll be banking for fletching... Tower goes down, archers are coming out, the range went in the middle of the map, which is good. This is why the Vils uh, showed up when they showed up, right? A little bit later than the, the Mount Arms. A spear coming out for Boothman, he was not sure uh, what the opening would be. Although I have seen some people going spears against Mount Arms. I don't usually do it, but it's not unheard of. Gonna lose the berry line. This seems like a really good fight for Boothman, actually. He had the hill advantage, and the Jake didn't have any spears really in there. I think he had one, but it was almost dead. Really good cleanup for Boothman. So that's still plus one villager for the Jake, but Boothman now has the military lead, and he's got the mobility. So in this situation, the Jake, or uh, Boothman rather, like he wants to try to kill this, but these will just go in the, the tower. He could go for a counterattack. A couple strategies to deal with a um, uh, uh, forward aggressive player when you're going scouts. Um, you want to have like four scouts minimum. You can come back into the rally line like around tier. Look for those uh, spearmen. Try to pick the spearmen off so that they, they can't get into like a big uh, mass again. Once they get to like three or four spearmen, you need like an infinite amount of scouts. Or you're just going to have to switch to range. More likely just having to switch off into range. So you want to keep this the spear number down. Uh, he didn't go for that. He went for the trying to pressure this a little bit. Um, but the other way is he could just go all the way around to the base. And start attacking the vills of uh, the Jake. Trying to uh, kill the walling vills before he gets fully walled as well. Uh, but that's not what he went for. Um, I like the tower on the gold and the, the farms. Probably could have been here though. I think that if the Jake does some uh, some math nerding and reads the tiles or becomes a topographer like uh, Tony would say. Haven't seen Tony in a long time. It would be cool to see Tony playing again. Um, that he, he would tower over here outside of the range of this tower because this was placed not at the edge of the gold. The Jake also has 500 stone, so he's looking for stuff just like that. But for now, Booth is safe, and it looks like he's going to 
uh, the Jake is going to go Path of Least Resistance and just go towards the south. So uh, this actually won't come in to hurt him. So nice job for Booth there. Defending well. Only down by one vil. Uh, but the Jake does have double the military on the map. And it's archers and spears and it's Ethiopian. So super strong composition. 17 farms against five so the route to castle age booth is definitely going to get castle first if he can keep um from any towers getting up in here in this range that covers his his farm so he'll need to start guarding around here um either going up or switching to to skirms right like a couple ranges here or even one range here it would block off the the attack towards the farms i like the second tower position that's perfect um might not even need the range if he has both the the towers might be able to just straight fc out of here really good farm balance oh i guess it's only 15 though because these aren't usable Absolutely perfect tower. Any counterattacks going on? There is. Okay. So Booth is uh, defending and attacking at the same time. There's also some... <laughs> huh? Ooh. So if those scouts actually came to support these, I think they would have killed the archers. But it looks like... Just these two archers are going to kill three villagers. A lot is going on here. Absolute chaos. Okay. The Jake is still slowly pushing his uh, advantage here towards the south. Oh, he's going to dive underneath the tower. He needs to, to get about one tile closer. So the nice thing here is um, the Jake can put the archers into the tower if he wants and idle five villagers of Boothman um, while not having to idle his own. And he could use his vills to either do wood or do the stone or something else. Um, also, you could dive with the vills. Archers in the tower, dive with the vills, kill the tower. He's, he's doing a completely different thing. Um, but what his he's doing is also going to work pretty well. Um, should be able to idle some wood vills and booth is actually not pulling vills to protect this tower So the tower might go down if the tower goes down uh, Booth is gonna lose, you know five to six farms If the if the Jake does what we expect which would be even more towers Surprised that he's not killing it now like it's it's pretty crucial that he gets this tower down We could stop all those farms. I guess he's gonna go for the the wood control also a good choice this is like the opposite of pick your poison the jake is like let's pick which which uh nice thing we want to happen to us it's our birthday and christmas and easter bunnies are out all at the same time bill coming out free villager actually unfortunate for booth Gonna get all of his wood. Eight villagers are idle. Tower, 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 tower. Let's actually zoom out so we can see properly all these towers. It's a stone. Certainly a safe call. Booth still has a really good farm count if he can get back onto it, though. The harassment by DeJek is, is really idling a lot of farms, even though they are in a safe location. Um, yeah, this is a pretty tight game. Both players are, are making strong moves in their own favor. That was a great cleanup by Boothman, killing all those... 
uh, villagers and archers and stopping the progression on his wood line and farm line. So I think that Jake probably got a bit greedy. Like I was saying, I think I would have put the archers in here, attack this with the, the villagers. Um, or done archers in here and then villagers on wood. He went for the greedier play. Sometimes it can be good. You can get a bigger lead, um, but sometimes it goes full disaster like that and the opponent gets a potential comeback. About a half of the lead for Booth. Same exact. We got a lot of buying going down here. Looks like uh, the Jake is going to go up now. Booth just went up as well. So both players. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, okay. Both players are up. Same Ville count, same military count. Really even game. Okay, so what is the next phase here for these two players? 22 farms for Boothman. So he definitely could sustain some uh, stables and a TC. Uh, with this many, he could sustain, I think, three TC, uh, three stables and one TC. Uh, so could be a big uh, scout into Night Rush. Um, Malian's also getting... Uh... Actually, I think they changed their bonus. Maybe I shouldn't say anything. I'm not sure what their gold bonus actually is. They changed it a bit. There's something there, though. 20 farms for DeJake, but I don't see Vils on half of them. Forward range going down, so it's going to be crossbow, Ethiopian crossbow. Yeah, I mean, we would expect that. Um, second stable. So, crossbow against knight seems to be the play. We've got both players on stone. The Jake can drop a castle if he wants, either defending, um, as we know, the Jake doesn't do the defense, the Jake does the offense. Might go for a forward castle. It's either going to be Siege Workshop with these bills or a forward castle. With the mobility of Boothman's Knights though. If the Jake gets too aggressive here, drops a forward castle and doesn't use it for defense, and Boothman masses knights and goes straight to the Jake's base, you could see um, big damage going down to the Jake. Plus two is coming out on the knights now. We're on two stable and a TC. Okay, so um, not quite the three TC full aggro way that. I think I would have gone just because I like doing it. Um, I'm going to go a bit safer. going to be able to macro out of this for Booth. Um, but he's not going to have that, that uh, large knight army that could be raiding right now. Um, or less. He still can go forward if he wants. He's got a good amount of scouts. Yeah, I think the Jake's army would be best used. Or Boothman, rather, would be best used forward onto Jake's base. Very strong... Uh, Castle again for the Jake. We see a very consistent dropping those castles on people. That TC should go down. It will also open up a lot of those farms uh, to attack from the castle. So a lot of the food income is going to go dead here for Boothman. Thumb ring coming out for the Jake. Yeah, GG Castle. So, Boothman is safe here. He's got static defense. He's got something that's not going to move, and it's going to keep this position until, like, Trebs come out. Uh, so the mobile army here should be looping around, doing damage. Right? That could end the game instantly. The Jake's going to go around the side with the crossbow, see if he can progress any farther onto the gold. Um, Boothman dropping the Siege Workshop. Very nice. Going to be able to defend with the castle on one end and then defend with Meganels on the other. So uh, Booth feels very safe now. I think he'll start moving forward soon. Yeah, there we go. 
the counterattack is going to be huge. Both on the same uh, population of Vils. The Jake has slightly more army, but their crossbow and their forward. And they're not going to get too much more damage with scorpions and towers and castles here. Um, but this... This is going to do insane damage. What up, Penguin? Nice. Just imagine the Jake's eyeballs right now. His eyes are getting really wide. Oh no. Oh no. Booth took some heavy losses the last couple of games. This is our third game of the Jake against Boothman. The Jake took the first two, and the, the second one was very spicy in the chat and uh, um, the play styles too. So this is probably just such a good feeling for Boothman. Absolutely slaughtering these villagers after losing your main TC. He's also got the second TC in the back, booming away. <laughs> booming as if one TC is booming. Um... 2TC for the Jake as well, but now he's got a lot of uh, catching up to do here. 43 villagers against 58. Third TC coming out for the Jake, so he already knows like vills are going to be a problem. Oh yeah, this is where you do, you like start screaming and shaking during the game. You're like, I'm doing it, I'm winning. Is Booth going to return the favor here with the castle? I mean, the foundation is definitely a good indicator he wants to. Here's the Vils coming. Knight, okay, so the crossbowman came back now. Monk's gonna get... Oh, he's gotta be careful! Oh. Those are some weak spearmen. Didn't even try to attack. So, now Booth has the villager lead. Very strong villager lead, but... He's got nothing in terms of army. So if the Jake actually spies this out and sees what's going on, and, and on that note, Booth probably should be fighting and drawing the army south um, away from the position he wants to drop the castle. Although this is fine too, drawing it over to the west if, if he doesn't see. It's full disaster if he gets the villas killed. Pikes are going over to the right. He needs to keep them here. Like, even if the knights die, you want to keep the Jake's eyeballs on those knights and not looking around his base. He's going to walk right past it, though. Okay. This is going to work. So the booth is going to... What's he get here? He gets some gold. Definitely a good staging area, right? He can he can make some siege if he wants to. Start pressuring onto the Jake's um, TC with uh, Manganels. Oh, he's got the Manganels already. He got it across the map. Oh my god. He can make more at home, defend his base, while pressuring from the safety of a castle. This is really well played by Booth. Under heavy pressure again for a third game in a row. The Dake is just throwing punches. <laughs> right? Jake is teaching Booth some nasty, some nasty things. Forward castles and mangoes. Okay, defensive castle here for Jake now. Not sure that I like the position though. It's not going to keep his main TC safe. Here would be better because it, it could save both and the stone. But small, uh, small, small critique. So farm count for Boothman is huge, 31 on food compared to 11. So the route to Imp is going to be in his favor, which means um, the Jake, I don't know, maybe he'll do market abuse. Maybe he'll try to outboom and not worry about the castles dying. This is a hard position. Great sound. Booth also knows about the TC to the left. He'll probably walk down south first because he 
I mean, he knows there's stuff over here, but as soon as he sees the castle, I think he'll run over there to the western flank because uh, he already walked over there with the knight. So he absolutely knows that there's a TC over there that can be attacked. Oh, be careful, Booth! Oh, and then he tried to run back and he, he clicked a farm. This happens. Jake is getting a little cocky here. I wouldn't walk up like that. He goes for it. Booth should have thrown some rocks. Wow, okay, so a bit of a disaster, but that's actually going to um, even up the game a little bit. He's getting great damage in, though, anyways. The Jake's probably looking back to see where he can counter attack now. Yep. Nice. 50 villagers to 77 now. Jibetas are a pretty cool unit. It's an interesting mix, right? Good mobility, really small HP, good damage, low range. Very niche. Very niche. Still booming away his booth, adding TCs, getting that macro going. I love that he's putting uh, mills down too. Like he's consistently doing good farms. Now the Ethiopian crossbow should be enough to kill the Jibetos. It's just the mobility factor that's going to be uh, helping the Jibetos raid and then the mangoes. Um, so Jibetos are mainly for like raiding slash protecting the mangoes and then the mangoes will be the thing that will deal with the crossbow as, as long as they're not uh, arbs. As soon as the arbs come out then the arbs will, will crush the mangoes. But we got some time for that and actually Booth is already up to imp. Give us, give us the big shots. Oh! <laughs> yes. This is what we, oh my god. This is why we watch this game. Oh my god. Boothman. Oh, Boothman. This is so glorious. I'm very happy for Boothman getting a, getting a win here and splattering this way. After the, after just the beating from the Jake in the first two games. And now Boots is going to go for that uh, that castle. Yeah, it feels like a hit imp insta resign. This was an exciting set. Really fun games by these guys. I think my favorite game was game two though, because it was. It, the, it was so weird, and it went from, like, I thought the Jake was, like, could never lose to thinking that Booth was definitely going to come back. Literally. Like, he even at the end, I think he had a 40 vil lead. He just couldn't uh, sustain the production of army to deal with the longswords. Another castle. <laughs> He's trying. Oh, the Jake. You have to appreciate the uh, the effort here. I don't see how it goes down though. Yeah, now that that goes down, he knows the Treb's gonna pop out. Oh, full cell. He's like, I have to go in now. He has enough to go too, very nice. So he is gonna manage to go up. Treb to win. More Geppetto raiding. So you gotta be careful not to go into the castle range, but I think he can take some uh, extra losses at this point. He's got a good lead. Finally, <laughs> how, how crazy is this? This is where Boothman's TC was. 
Right? Right? Who needs a main TC? Mangoes are moving around the map. Probably going to look for more TCs to, to kill. This castle is going to buy to Jake some good time. He's got a lot of uh, farms coming in now. He's macroing out well, but uh, the Jibettos now know where the farms are, so we'll probably see the mangoes change direction and come down here towards the, uh, the farms as well. Got some sneaky hidden bases with some good gold. Alright, the castle is going to go down. Second castle going to go down. The Jake is just about up. He's got a 30 vil deficit. Military uh, count is just about the same though. So we'll see. I mean, if, if the Jake like does like 30% faster movement and action speed for the next five minutes, he could come back. Everything has to go in his favor right now though. He needs uh, Boothman to throw an army and then uh, maybe get some sort of map control on some of Booth's Vills somehow, and then maybe a route to victory could be had. Towers are going to buy some time. It's all about buying time right now. More Rax is coming out. Arbalist coming out. I think that uh, DeJake is going to have the better army composition for a while. But from, from a super bad uh, eco deficit. So he's got to be perfect, right? He has to kill all the mangoes for free. That's one. That's two. Free mangoes. They're the best kind. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, that, that ain't free. That's not free. Those are some costly mangoes. <laughs> yes, the one Archer Micro. Mm. Dedication. Treb's coming up. TC's going down. The Jake is trying to macro and run to this corner, but I just I I think he's dead. Yeah, Penguin, I think... Oh, these are pretty... What are these weapons? Are they throwing wrenches? Are these wrenches? Winches with wrenches? Wrenches with wrenches. I don't know. Something. They're definitely throwing something that's not... That's not knife. GG. That was super strong comeback by Booth, and we almost saw him come back in game two. This time he was able to do it. He used the mobility of the knights. Uh, I think if the Jake put hit the castle instead of flexing so hard, did, did Jake flex so hard he hurt his muscle? If if did Jake flex a little bit less and dropped the castle at his base, I think that he wouldn't have taken the counterattack damage and could have uh, just sustained that lead. Um, but this was funner to see. Um, some counterplay came in, and and did Jake did the flex, killed the TC, which is awesome um but uh yeah the the booth night counterattack was just devastating gg well played you guys that was very fun to watch um very close matches heck yeah <laughs> yeah you you did you did kind of deserve that one did you <laughs> deserve to loot to to get the counterattack um well played booth Very fun. All right, uh, to Jake, if you're gonna if you're gonna play or stream, I'd be happy to uh, throw a host over your way. Um, but I think I should probably go to bed, keep my good schedule. I gotta make sure I get up and run again tomorrow.